These rigs require quite a bit of power, so electricity cost is a big factor. Where you live in the United States also plays a major role in how much it costs to mine, since there are stark differences in electricity prices from state to state. Alaska, Hawaii, California, and Connecticut have the steepest electricity costs in the country. New York is also one of the priciest states where electricity bills are concerned. So it doesn't necessarily make sense to mine here in New York, but it's a totally different story where electricity is less expensive. Just take Washington state. It's got some of the cheapest power sources in the US, so there, the profits can outweigh the costs. Outside the US, the prices drop even lower. A study released in 2018 by Elite Fixtures showed that countries like Egypt and Kuwait are among the places where it is least expensive to mine for Bitcoin. But one important thing to keep in mind is that the size of the prize that miners win exponentially decreases over time. Do you see this high, uh, lower yield move as sustainable or is this a blip? I think it's a blip. You're probably going to see the yields going a little bit higher, but you must remember these yields are still very, very low on a historical basis. So I don't think there's a direct relationship between higher yields and maybe a lower market or a higher market. Uh, you can look at the historical record and there's no clear correlation. So I'm not too worried about that. It's already having a pretty big impact on EM, Mark. We'll come to that a little bit later. Um, we're also seeing a pretty big impact on tech uh, that is bouncing back. How high, though, do you think the U.S. yield can get without having an impact broadly on markets? People are talking about getting up to 2%. Do you see that? Do you see us going further? Uh, no, I don't see that. I see maybe 1.6%. And uh, that's, I think, already in the market. I think people are already expecting that. So I think uh, it, it's uh, already discounted in the prices. Um, what areas, though, are most vulnerable? I mean, the Fed keeps talking about if financial conditions are tightened, then they'll do something about it. So far, so good. What areas have you noticed have started to feel some kind of potential tightening? Uh, the real problem is in the tech sector, particularly those companies that have no earnings and that have been pushed up dramatically. And uh, one of the things I fear is that believe it or not, a decline of the Bitcoin price. I think the relationship between Bitcoin prices and the tech market is very close. So watch that indicator. I think Bitcoin prices go down. I think the tech stocks are going to be hit very badly. Uh, you bring up Bitcoin. Let's talk about gold. Gold has been under pressure, Mark. Outflows from ETFs, absolutely massive. What do you think? You added to your position. I remember last time we spoke, you were pretty comfortable with your position. Prices have come down since then. What are you doing right now? Uh, right now, I'm holding on to the gold. Uh, of course, it's come down. It's quite amazing. I think there, again, is a relationship between the Bitcoin and gold because you talk to all these people and they say, gee, Bitcoin is like gold. It's a, it's a store of value. So I think there's some relationship between these two. And one of the reasons why gold is down. Otherwise, there's no good reason why gold should be down at this stage. Yeah, but Mark, Bitcoin's moving with tech. It's moving with momentum. Exactly. But it's come down. As you know, it's been pretty volatile. Uh, hopefully it stays up. <laughs> I'm not I'm not predicting or wishing that it goes down, but I just hope it stays up because tech stocks then will be able to revive. As you know, some of these tech stocks like Tencent and others have come down substantially. So we've got to watch that carefully. There is increasing adoption of, of the Bitcoin network, and, and that's from everyone that are actually large institutional investors to institutional service providers. There's a lot of news going on in the space and, and rapidly increasing adoption. And with that, we think the infrastructure that underpins the network also needs to become more robust and more institutionalized. And, and that's what we're doing. We are a large scale Bitcoin miner. And we're coming public via SPAC because it allows us to, to move quickly and take advantage of the marketplace. Now, your parent company, Bitfury, since its inception in 2011, you've mined 600,000 Bitcoin. How many more are you planning? And talk to us about the scale of demand. Absolutely. So we have a plan uh, for Cypher specifically to build out our facilities to be mining over 21,000 Bitcoin per annum uh, in 2025. And we begin mining this year and we scale up year over year as we go. 
one of the great advantages we have is, is partnering with Bitfury, our parent. There, there's really no one with more experience in the space, having set up over seven, uh, or excuse me, seven data centers uh, around the globe, had them operating and mining over 600,000 Bitcoin. It, it speaks to their experience at deployment, uh, operating and, and maintaining Bitcoin mining centers. And so we are doing it at a very large scale and we have unique advantages by partnering with them, both on the services and the equipment side. Now, part of why people think Bitcoin is valuable is because of the fixed number of coins that could be mined, 21 million of them. I know people have said, oh, that is a long way off, but it could come sooner than we think if companies like you uh, keep moving quickly. What happens when we run out of the 21 million or could that number rise? Well, the number's not going to rise. It's, it's fixed in the software. And, and we actually do have some time to get to the last one. We've got over 100 years. But, uh, you know, most of them will be mined in the next 20 years. Keep in mind, we are not going to speed up that schedule. Uh, but as you see increasing adoption uh, by institutional users, you know, we would anticipate that that is going to drive the price higher. We think that uh, transaction fees are also a piece of, of revenue, obviously, that we will be collecting as being part of the vital infrastructure that helps it grow. I mean, keep in mind, today the estimates are that there are about 100 million users of the Bitcoin network. You know, we think that could easily grow to billions of users in the coming years, and, and that's gonna drive uh, the price and usage of the network up. And, and you need, uh, you, you want the network to be robust to support that continued growth. And, and that's really what we can bring. So let's talk about the price. Mike Novogratz thinks it'll get to 50,000. Um, uh, beyond talking about uh, another CEO I was speaking with thinks it's going to go to infinity, Mars and beyond, but give me a number. I, I, I saw that. That was great. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's really hard to predict the short term path of prices, but it, I do believe over time, and I, and I think everyone that is involved in Cypher and Bitfury believes over time, the price is going to go up. It can be volatile in the short term, but if you see continued network adoption, you'll see price appreciation over the long term. The great thing about our business model is we are the classic picks and shovels business. The, the price of Bitcoin can drop quite a bit and we can still have a very profitable company. We really do provide the infrastructure that makes it work. And we have the lowest cost of, of power or we are at the low end of the global cost curve and that enables us to be very profitable and, and withstand volatility in the price. I misspoke on Novogratz. He thinks it'll get to 100,000 before the end of the year, then 500,000 beyond that. You know, your focus is Bitcoin. What's your take on all these other coins, Dogecoin and some of these altcoins, which, which Novogratz told me he thinks Doge is a joke? I, I think Mike's a very sharp guy. Um, you know, our focus is, is on Bitcoin mining. That, that's the only coin that, that we have in our current plans to support from a mining perspective. There are many interesting things going on in the, in the crypto space and often very fun to, to read about or invest in at small scale personally. But, you know, our focus uh, from a business perspective is Bitcoin. Um, you know, a, a uniquely natively digital uh, store of value and value transmission network that's open source is just extremely robust and, and has the potential to disrupt a lot in financial services. So, so we are big bulls in the long term. Um, you know, I won't give a specific price target, but up. What are the biggest risks to your business, though? I mean, obviously, there are many things that are unproven. There's regulation to come. What do you think the biggest headwinds are? Well, I think they're related to the ecosystem overall. I mean, I, I've, I've heard folks speculate about the Bitcoin price that, you know, one thing we know for sure is that the, the terminal value of Bitcoin is not where it is today because there's still risks and questions about adoption. And like any network adoption story, you know, those risks are reflected in the price day to day and they're discounting a future where perhaps there's billions of users or, or perhaps there's not. I think we, we have exposure to those same kinds of risks. We, we do have a lot of resilience against the drop of price in Bitcoin, but if it goes away, you know, that is a major risk to our bank.
pizza is huge, by the way. And if I'm not mistaken, it was like 40 bucks and 35 bucks, which is insane for pizza. It looks really good. The other part of what they were telling me, which I can't tell if they knew me or didn't know me or what they were doing, they're like, do you want to pay for it in Bitcoin? Are you trolling me, dude? They're like, do you own crypto? I'm like, all right, pump. All right, fucking parabolic guy. Like, no, I'm not paying Bitcoin. I'm paying fucking cash. They're like, what? You don't own crypto? What are you, stupid? Do you want your score to go through the roof? I sold my crypto. Everyone knows I sold crypto at 11000 The market's tanking. I don't need the Pizzetti guys to give me a Bitcoin lecture. It's fucking crazy. Diamond hands, paper hands. I'm just trying to eat pizza. I'm getting fucking ripped. Marcus making a comeback. Ooh, this is nice. You know what? This super light. You know what this reminds me of? Upper crust and upper crust prices too. I just spit. I don't care. Deal with it. One bite, everybody knows rules. Pizzetti, solo pizza review. Working, doing it. Let's do it. These Bitcoiners can make some pizza. This is good. What are they doing? Bitcoin. I've never heard that. You want to pay in Bitcoin? I'm like, no, cash. Like, you sure you don't want to do Bitcoin? What's up with you and Bitcoin? This is really good pizza. This is right up there with my favorite in Miami. People know about this place, Pizzetti. You got to save up. You got to have your multiples. $40 or $35, 38 It was 38 bucks for this pizza. That is ridiculous. But it's very good. It actually reminds me of, of Upper Crust in Boston. I think Upper Crust went out of business because they weren't paying their workers. I don't know if these guys are paying Bitcoin, but this is very good pizza. This is... Oh, I really like this. I'm going to ask this guy. This is one of the waiters. They're Bitcoin. I'm going to see if he gets it. See if he see if I talk to me about Bitcoin real quick. Hey, I'm making a video. Why Why did you want me to pay for uh, Bitcoin? Why are, you so, why are you so in on Bitcoin? No, it's not only Bitcoin. It's the crypto world. It's, Everything. So yeah. everyone who comes here, you try to be like, no, 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 it's just, uh, just you because I just was making the investment earlier. You have no idea who I am though, right? Yeah, I knew. Oh, you did, so you're busting my balls. <laughs> exactly. All right, that, I, mean, I, I thought you guys didn't know. I was like, what are these fuckers talking about Bitcoin? They try to get... We treat everybody the same, but you, when I saw you come here, I was like... I thought you guys just randomly, I'm like, fuck <laughs> these guys, Bitcoin. All right, that makes more sense. All right. The pizza's really good. I was between seven, nine, eight, one. That's how good I think it is. Um, I'm gonna go seven, nine. They had more tang, but this is like as good as you can get. But you better invest in Bitcoin and make like triple your money to afford it. Thirty-eight bucks. Uh, that's a review. Really, really good pizza. Awesome date spot too. Um, even though I'm alone, like a lunatic.